Welcome to the Abundance Hack Show, where we are inspiring you to ditch the outdated beliefs, release the blocks, and fully embrace your sovereignty so you can confidently expand to allow more love, joy, and aligned success in your life. I am Niaje, your conscious accountability partner, reminding you that abundance is your birthright. Hey, m ms Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. What are you manifesting in your life today? If you're joining me for the first time, although m ms are really yummy candies, it actually stands for magical manifestors because we are manifesting by default with our thoughts, with our beliefs, with our actions. And today's guest knows all about that. So this is Christina Lennon. She is a psychologist that includes hy- hypnosis in her practice. So I'm really excited to talk about how she does that and what she really passionate about. But before we dive into her story, Christina, I want to ask you, what does abundance mean to you? Abundance just means, I suppose, fullness, feeling full, full of whatever it is that you want to be full of. That's what it means to me. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Just simple and straight to the point. (laughs) Yeah. Full. (laughs) Full. I love it. So, So tell us about you. How did you get into what you were currently doing? Wow, that's a long story. Um, (laughs) It started many, many moons ago, back when I was quite young. I had a real issue dealing with people's emotions. If, If people cry, and I tend to be one of those people that people tell their problems to. I've just got one of those faces. And if somebody cried, I'd literally be like, okay, that's it. I'm out of here. So I wanted to learn how to deal with that firstly. So I went to, I started an introduction to counseling course and I just became really interested in the mind and the different approaches there are. Um, I quickly sort of fell out with counseling because to me, this is my personal view, um, but to me, it keeps people dwelling they tend to stay stuck just going over the same thing. So I wanted something that moved them forward a bit. And um, back 24 years ago, I was pregnant with my son and he was my second child and he was going to be big. I was terrified of having him. And a hypnotist said he hypnotized me to have a pain-free birth. So I was like, okay, I'll try this. And that's how I came across hypnosis. And it was mind blowing. Like, and I just kept going back to him all the time. Like, can you do this? Can you do this? Can you do this? And so, yeah. So it was like, I have to have this skill. So that's where I sort of learn about hypnosis. And yeah, so I've got real life experience of it first before I then decided what I wanted to do it. Okay. So I have to ask, so did you have a pain-free birth? Do you think it made a huge difference in, in, giving birth to your son i'm not gonna lie to you and say it was pain free (laughs) i don't think you'd believe me (laughs) however it was my second baby and um not getting too gruesome but my first baby i taught she was six pounds um i think three my second baby was nine pounds oh wow and i didn't tear anything and he sort of one of the suggestions was that your body will stretch and that i'd sleep between contractions i did and I was able to store my energy and he actually got stuck um, on the delivery and they had to dislocate his arm to get him out. But it was, so it was fairly pain free. I didn't have any painkillers. Um, and the midwife said that I was, I remained really calm. And I don't know what it's like in America, but now they actually recommend hypnobirthing. When I did it years ago, it wasn't a thing. you know, um, but now hypnobirthing is a thing. It's not something I do, but I've done it once for a friend, but it, and yeah, it really helped. So it's, it definitely made a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And there's less, there's less interventions when hypnosis involved in a birth. Wow. That's powerful. (laughs) Yes. Thank you for sharing. Wow. Okay. So, so then you, you started psychology. Did you start initially with hypnosis or did you incorporate that a little later? No, I, I studied psychology and then I added hypnosis was a, an option to add on the end. So I added hypnosis on the end. 
<clears throat> and then I just started my hypnotherapy practice and like normal hypnotherapists, I went through the stopping smoking, the weight loss and everything and did all the usual stuff with it. Um, and that was back in 1999. So I've been practicing for a lot of years. Um, and then I decided I, like, I preferred working with people like with anxieties or unusual issues. Um, and then I got into business and that's where I just felt this is my area because it's, it's all about people improving their lives. And that's what I wanted to do. And it was sort of my own journey, you know, learning to overcome certain things for myself, my limiting beliefs and my um, anxieties because I used to suffer really badly with anxiety. And once I overcome overcame something myself then it was like right now I can help a client with it but I wouldn't help a client with something that I hadn't first dealt with myself so yeah it's and it's it's been an amazing journey of twists and turns for me to get where I am now but now feels I've arrived it's it's right for me I love it. I love it. So we're going to dive into anxiety and imposter syndrome. But before we do, I want you to share your message because I know some people are like, mm, I don't know if I'd allow someone to like hypnotize me, but you have a really powerful video where you say we're being hypnotized every single day by the media, by society, by social media. So can you share a little bit about that? Of course. It's this is this is what I hear all the time. It's like I don't know whether I could be hypnotized. I don't know where, and, and I don't come from a sort of a fluffy background. I'm, I am very straight. I'm scientific, and I'm a doubting Thomas. I need facts and figures and data for me to believe something. So I was never the per kind of person that would have been interested in the hypnosis. But I am also open-minded. I thought, well, I'll try it. I'll try everything once. And being blown away, it was like, okay, I need to dig into this. But the basics are, we are being hypnotized all the time. All hypnosis is, is influence. So we're being influenced by things every single day. I stopped watching the news years ago because I coined myself as a, a, an empath and I thought, you know, I'm being too influenced by everything. I was getting too upset. I was being too affected by everything going on around me. So I decided to stop watching the news, things like that. So I wouldn't get influenced. But basically all hypnosis does, we go through a, what we call a theta state multiple times a day. Now the theta state is where we are the most highly suggestible and Ideally, first thing on a morning, last thing on a night, we always go through theta state, but we drift in and out of that state multiple times a day when we're daydreaming, driving our car. So as a hypnotist, it's my job to get you to the theta state. So I will, I know how to get you to the theta state where your subconscious mind is in a daydream state. So I can easily access the, con the unconscious mind and put a suggestion in there, which that happens all the time. Otherwise we'd never learn anything. We'd never have an opinion on anything, but it's just a hypnotist is skilled to get you there. And then we're skilled with the right things to say. You know, people nowadays are all about affirmations. Affirmations can be very damaging if you're saying the wrong things. So it's all about the use of clean, very pure language using the client's language. So you have to know how to speak to somebody, what to say and how to get them to that state. And that's pretty much hypnosis. And it's all about repetition. Just repeat, repeat, repeat. I love so it's, not kind of, it's not that scary. <laughs> It's, it's not, honestly, I think that people, they, they may associate it with, you know, the TV performances where someone get, gets hypnotized and then they're like barking like a dog or something like that. So I feel like that's the picture people have in their minds when they're like, oh no, I, I can't do that. It's, I've, I've, I recorded my 44th TV show as of January. In January, I recorded my 44th TV show 
as a stage hypnotist. So I, uh, in 2015, I decided I'd, I'd been a hypnotherapist for many years and I decided I wanted to kind of stick my head above a parapet and get, draw attention to myself. So I decided to become a stage hypnotist and I decided to use my dog as somebody that would hypnotize people. And it's funny because you get 15 people on stage and as a stage hypnotist, you're looking for speed. So you, when you get those 15 people, you're there to entertain people. So you don't want to spend 40 minutes doing an induction because it's boring to watch. So once you've got five people that are firstly funny, they're, they're, they've got a bit of personality and they're under, you'll get rid of the rest. The people that are a bit slower, you'll just get rid of. So then people think, oh, I can't be hypnotized because, you know, I was once sent back or that not everybody can, hip can be hypnotized. Everybody is hypnotized. It's a natural state we go in and out of. So everyone can be hypnotized. And if you were not able to be hypnotized at one point, it was just situational or, you know, the wrong hypnotist or whatever everybody can be hypnotized. But yeah, people get the wrong impression from that. But believe you me, if I can make you forget your name or forget a number, I can make you be more productive and I can make you be more positive and more focused. You know, it's, it's pretty simple. <laughs> Yeah, I so I I'm a certified sound therapy practitioner, and the crystalline Tibetan sound bowls takes people into that theta state using sound frequencies. So wow. I know all about the theta state and what the the different bowls are attuned to, like the different chakras. And so it when you're in the theta state, it's going through and it's cleansing your energy. So it's it's a lot different than what you do, but I'm very familiar with yeah. how that theta state is healing, and it mm -hmm. takes takes you into that higher level of consciousness so you can overcome a lot of the blocks. So yeah. let's dive into two of the biggest blocks that I see people have, which is anxiety and imposter syndrome. So mm -hmm. what is your experience with those? I, we, and we could actually break it up. Let's, let's address anxiety first. Anxiety. So for instance, I've, I've been treating anxiety for years because I went, that was my first mission that I'd sent myself on was to solve my own anxiety is to have terrible panic attacks and i wasn't any good at speaking with people which is one of the reasons why i decided to become a stage hypnotist because it was like if i can go on tv or in front of thousands or millions of people then i'd say job done so that that was the mission that i set out to to achieve but i had to get rid of that anxiety and to me the, the way I see anxiety is we have a negative thought. So people, a lot of people think that overthinking is a symptom of anxiety. It's not. When we overthink, we cause anxiety. So for instance, if I start thinking there's a saber toothed tiger, it's going to kill me. Anxiety is needed for me to move out of that situation. We get a massive dump of adrenaline, which allows us to run, fight the saber-toothed tiger or freeze. So that, but that adrenaline is really useful for that situation. However, day to day, we don't really need much adrenaline. It's, it's not something that we need, but we are creating, we're catastrophizing situations so we're sat here today, if I'd have rewound 20 years, I'd have been like, oh my God, I've got a podcast to do. Oh God, people are going to be looking at me. What if I say something wrong? What if this happens? What if that happens? It's going to be terrible. And I would have given myself loads of adrenaline into my body. Adrenaline is not very good for thinking. It's not very good for lots of things. It's designed to make us run fast or fight. It, you know, it powers up our body, not our brain. So all anxiety is, is adrenaline, too much adrenaline in the system. So the way I deal with that is I get people to identify what are the thoughts they are having in their mind that are releasing the adrenaline. And then I use hypnosis to delete those thoughts. And I literally just say to my clients, every time they have those thoughts, delete. 
erased and we replace it with a really strong thought that releases serotonin or a different chemical or hormone into our nervous system that's going to give us a different response and literally every, i've got 99 percent success rate after three sessions anxiety gone and they start their life literally changes because they then start to see all the possibilities that is you know available to them so that's my take on anxiety <laughs> That is absolutely amazing. I, I love it. And I love that you can do it in, in just three sessions. That's really impressive. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been doing this for 20 years. It's, I'm really quick at identifying where, you know, people's patterns and everything. So I can literally look and go, oh, wow, you're doing that. You're doing that. You're doing that. That's what we need to get rid of. This is what we need to replace it with. Bang, do it. And that's it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> What do you do for energetic self-care? Life challenges us. However, we have tools to help us navigate the transitions, release trapped emotions, maintain positive energy, and expand to allow more joy and excitement. Abundant and Aligned Society is an energetic self-care accountability program that helps you go from stress and anxiety, fight or flight, to operating from a place of abundance and alignment. Go to niage.com forward slash society for more information and start vibrating higher. All right, so imposter syndrome, let's dive into that. Imposter syndrome. So Generally, I treat procrastination, which comes from things like anxiety, that we're overthinking what we're going to be doing. Imposter syndrome. It's imposter syndrome is we've upgraded. So imposter syndrome tends to f affect high level achievers. We've already arrived at the destination. We just, everyone else can see that we've arrived you know, we, we are here, we have the title, we have arrived, we have the knowledge, experience, but our self-image just hasn't caught up yet. And it feels, to some people, it's a bit like, I don't know whether you've got Snakes and Ladders, the game Snakes and Ladders in America. It, it feels a bit like that. You get up the ladder, you're on that level, and you're terrified of sliding back down or you're terrified of being found out because you haven't, your self image still sees you as the old self, like the old inexperienced self and doesn't realize how much you now know. So imposter syndrome is a bit like meeting your ex 10 years later and they don't realize how much you've moved on and <laughs> I've upgraded, honey. <laughs> I Bye, love honey. it. <laughs> Yeah. So how, so how do you help people overcome imposter syndrome? So imposter syndrome, it's a need for the self image to catch up. So it, again, the best thing to do with self, with a self image issue is to find out where the issue is. So for instance, some people it's a money thing. They don't feel like they deserve the money or it could be that they don't feel like they're worth it. I had a hangover. I, I had kids when I was very young. Um, you know, I had, I had quite a bad sort of time when I was a teenager, lost my dad and everything. And I went through a, pa a space in my life where I felt like I was really worthless. So I'd, I'd achieved all these things in my life. I was getting degrees. I was, I was, you know, I was just constantly learning, getting more and more knowledge, but I never felt like I was quite there. It was, it, you know, I just felt like I was going to get found out and I'd achieve things. And I think, well, that was a fluke, you know? So well, how the hell did I do that? You know, I don't deserve this. And I, the way I cured that was I started to buy things for myself. And instead of, I never used to buy anything for myself because I'd always buy for my children, but they were growing up. And it was like, I started buying little things for myself and I'd say, because I'm worth it. And that's what I tell myself. And I post it anytime I post anything that I buy online, it's like, because I'm worth it. And it's, it's upgrading your own self image. I am important. I, I remember buying a thousand um, thread count Egyptian sheets because I'm worth it. And it's like just upgrading little things in your life, the type of toilet roll you use, 
the type of face products you use because I am worth it. And it's, it's identifying where you feel the lack is, whether it's a financial lack, a self-worth lack, a knowledge lack, and then starting to convince yourself you have arrived. Otherwise, the process can be a lot longer and you can miss out on a lot of opportunities because you don't see yourself as there. So instead of looking back, at, you know, when you're in the snakes and ladders game, instead of looking back at the snakes, you're looking up to the next ladder. It's stop looking backwards, start looking forwards to the next level. Yeah. So that's pretty much how I, you know, and I use hypnosis then to, you know, install that mindset. Um, Cause hypnosis, as you know, will just fast track the results. Mm -hmm. So do you think that a lot of the self doubt that causes imposter syndrome is established when people are children? It's, do you know, I, it tends, yes, it generally tends to come from childhood. Um, we all have the two voices in our head. You know, we have the cheerleader that's like, yes, you can do this. And then we have the other one that's just sat there going, really? You think you can do that? What are you doing? Everyone's going to laugh at you. And that person can be your mom. It can be your dad. It can be your sister. It can be the bully at school. It, you know, we tend to get this narrator that narrates our life uh, or a commentator and there's we constantly fight it i just knock the negative narrator out just delete it turn the volume down so all we can hear is a cheerleader but that voice tends to be somebody from our past it can be an ex-boyfriend that abused us it can be you know a, very often it's mothers a lot of the time it's mothers and it's not necessarily that they wanted to damage us. They wanted to keep us safe. You know, Oh, maybe you shouldn't try that. You should, you know, do this, get a normal job. <laughs> so, yes, I totally relate with, <laughs> with that one, <laughs> but yes. I, I really, really love that. Knock the negative narrator out. I love mm, that. Yeah. Just yeah. gone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. So you do, do you do, well, let me ask, do you do sessions online or do you mostly serve people in person? I, you know, years ago I started only working with people face to face and then I started to get a lot of interest from around the world because I've been on TV a lot and, you know, a lot of press out there. So then I started traveling to people and then, you know, Zoom came along. It was like, oh my God. So now um, well, specifically now, all my sessions are online, but I'd say 99% are online. I have clients from America, Russia, Switzerland, as well as, you know, all over the world, as well as the UK. So all my sessions are done online and they're just as effective as face to face. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes people feel even more comfortable online because they're, they're in their own environment. So it, it exactly. helps them relax a little bit more anyway. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. They're already comfortable. Obviously, association is a big thing. So if they can be comfortable in their own home, it's usually pretty, pretty good. You know, mm -hmm. they, they are already relaxed. Yeah. So what are your top three tips for living an abundant life? For living an abundant life? It's my top tip is you are what you tell yourself you are. So if you think you don't deserve something, you'll never get it. If you, if you feel, you know, and it, it's, I don't think people realize how powerful that is. When people say they can't do something, it's the most damaging thing ever. So I always install the word yet. And every one I work with, I always say yet. You, I can't afford this yet. I can't, I'm not confident yet. Just put, if you have to say something negative, put yet on the end of it. So yeah, the, is what we, you need to really concentrate on what you tell yourself. Adding a yet, look at your language patterns. You know, hypnosis is all, and NLP is always about language patterns. The language we use is vitally important. Um, 
have I got a third tip for living an abundant life? Be generous with yourself. Once you spend money, money comes in. That's what I found. The more I spent on a course or the more I spent on myself, it sort of opened up. It, it became more normal because it's, it's our subconscious mind to keep us safe. It's not our subconscious mind's job to make us rich or make us successful. It wants to keep us safe. So we need to take that image of success and make it safe. So if you spend it, you can earn it. So go spend money, let it be fluid. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Such an abundance mindset. So absolutely agree. <laughs> it's, it's so funny. I used to have this thing in my head. I used to, I had all the qualifications and things started to shift for me when it was a money issue, I used to believe that any time I got an amount of money in, that that same amount went out. So if I suddenly today got a thousand pounds unexpectedly, but yes, and then my car would break and it would cost me a thousand pounds. And that, that manifested, you know, embedded deep in me. So I, I reframed it and I started to think, right, the money's coming in and going out, in and out. So we'll just reframe it to whenever I, money goes out, money comes in. Cause that's what's happening. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Money's fluid. It comes in, it goes out. So then I just changed it to something that I can accept. Cause that is the main issue with affirmations. People use affirmations that are unrealistic. So they'll be like, I am a millionaire and they can't afford to pay their rent. Mm -hmm. And we have a critical, um, a reticular activating system at the base of our, our skull. And it's basically a, a bullshit detector. Mm. And if we lie, everything we say then will be thrown out. It's, it will be rejected. So it has to be acceptable. So instead of me saying, I am abundant, I have loads of money, when I knew I didn't, it was right, let's work with this in out. So I, I then changed my affirmations to whenever I spend money, money comes in to replace it. It's the same action. And I could accept that. And then I added to it and money's now flowing more fluidly than ever before. Now money's, you know, the more I spend, the more I earn. And I, I just added to it and added to it and added to it. And, and that's the difference. People want to go from poor to millionaire overnight. It's a tiny little step, 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 changing your affirmations, getting up to the next step. And that's how we build it. Yes. It makes so much sense. And, and I think that, you know, our, our bodies know when we say affirmations that we don't believe it, it creates a discord inside of us. So really just observing that and choosing yeah. affirmations that feel comfortable and safe now. And then, like you said, building on it, it's brilliant. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just, it's just stretching you ever so slightly, mm -hmm. you know, you, it, it takes a lot to become a millionaire. It takes a lot of change within you. It's not going to happen overnight mm -hmm. you know i'm not going to wake up tomorrow and get billionaire clients just like that it's, it's tiny little steps so you've got to upgrade your thinking all the time as you upgrade your self-image your self-worth with the little bits you buy yourself mm -hmm. it's little steps until eventually you're like wow look how far i've come but it can happen quickly it can happen really quickly but upgrade constantly Yes. I love it. I love it. So where can people find you online? Um, the people usually find me by Googling hypno dog, but I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Instagram, Christina Lennon. Um, I'll send you a link to my link tree, which links to all my sites. Um, but yeah, most people remember hypno dog from TV. So they usually Google that and find me somehow. <laughs> and you, what, what show were you on with Simon Cowell? Um, I did Britain's Got Talent with okay. Simon Cowell, um, but I did in America, we filmed um, the world's best in Hollywood. So I hypnotized Drew Barrymore, James Corden, um, and I worked with like RuPaul. Um, oh, I love I remember RuPaul. The, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was great. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, yeah, a few, I've done like 44 TV shows all around the world. So yes. 
That's amazing. We have a superstar on our show. <laughs> well, I'm not quite a superstar. <laughs> I've met lots of superstars there. But that's opened up a world to me that I can then work with celebrities. So I've worked with then a lot of celebrities through meeting them, through referrals. Mm. So it opened up a lot of doors to me. Amazing. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and just taking the time to explain this process. And, and I think I think it is very powerful. I think just tapping into that theta state is more powerful than people even know. So thank you for mm-hmm. spreading that awareness. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So I will have all of her links in the show notes. So you can definitely go check her out and check out the snippet of her dog. So cute. So I just saw a little snippet, but I want to see if there's a full video, but definitely check her out. And until next time, be decadent. Thank you for tuning in to the Abundance Hack Show. I would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and questions and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our yummy episodes. Every time you leave a five-star rating or review, I do my happy dance. 